Fatebringer. Everyone's favorite year one primary weapon, it's back, in both exotic and non-exotic form. Today I'm here to just kind of ramble about Fatebringer, just kind of give some thoughts on the weapon as it performs right now, maybe versus year one, and then I want to talk a little on hand cannons overall as an archetype. Fatebringer is still a very strong primary weapon, let's just clear that up right now, but it is not as strong as it was in year one. It's close. Also, if you are one of the lucky few to have an Imago with the Fatebringer perk set and rifled barrel, I'll tell you that your Imago could be better than Fatebringer, but there are instances where Fatebringer is better than Imago. I'm not really going to be talking about the exotic version, the one with arc damage, because it's not really relevant to what I'm going to be talking about. Plus, there are a lot of arc primary weapons now. Now, originally, I was asked a question on why I was still using Hawkmoon over Fatebringer, and it wasn't until I actually did some stat comparisons that I realized that Fatebringer may be the slightest bit better than Hawkmoon. It has 40 range to Hawkmoon's 38 with Hammerforged, better stability, but a Hawkmoon has the slight damage boost per shot, plus all the lucky shots in the chamber, plus three more shots in the magazine. Explosive rounds on Fatebringer will give you just enough damage to one-shot goblins and hobgoblins in VOG 390, which was the biggest part of me using Hawkmoon initially. Hawkmoon was a one-shot and Fatebringer wasn't, but I was not using explosive rounds, so now I'm a bit more on Fatebringer's side. Considerably more so. Fatebringer one-shots a lot of other things as well. Thrall and Acolytes at 390, so that's your Crota's End and your King's Fall. And ultimately, that's what you want with a hand cannon. One-shots. This is partly why Imago with Rifled Barrel with the Fatebringer perk set is both better and worse than Fatebringer. It's better because it gets those one-shots from farther away, but then without explosive rounds, sometimes you just can't get the one-shot on tougher enemies. Generally speaking though, most will find Fatebringer to be more than an acceptable weapon, although if you do not use explosive rounds on it, you are losing a large chunk of power on the weapon in the higher difficulty activities, specifically the new raids. Explosive rounds, I would say, are a near staple for the weapon, and the reason is so you can negate a decent chunk of the range nerfs that have hit hand cannons since year one. Explosive round damage is not affected by range, whereas gun damage is. This is why Fatebringer versus Imago Fatebringer is tough to call. In lower level activities, it doesn't really matter if you use explosive rounds or not, but in the new raids, the 390 stuff, it is a difference maker. You can be considerably farther away with explosive rounds and get the one-shot kill with Fatebringer versus not using explosive rounds and not even getting the kill at ranges where damage is at its maximum. Explosive rounds really are the difference maker on Fatebringer, taking it from a pretty good weapon to a really good weapon. So after using Fatebringer for a few days now, it has really dawned on me how much rifled barrel and to a lesser extent reinforced barrel carried the hand cannon archetype, specifically in PvP. It's basically at a shot package level of carry at this point, probably even more so, and shot package is a perk that simply got removed from the game because it felt so required to have. Explosive rounds in this case is Fatebringer's rifled barrel to an extent. But the more I think about it, the more I kind of realize and the more I kind of feel like the current Fatebringer is exactly where Bungie probably wants hand cannons to be. A shining example. Right now is one of the first times in the game that we really have this complete designation of ranges between all the primary weapon archetypes with each sub archetype allowing you to tweak those ranges by a little bit in various directions. Right now we have super close, close, close mid, mid, mid far, far, and super far in terms of ranges. A standard hand cannon is good in super close, close, close mid, and maybe a little bit of mid. A fast firing hand cannon gains power in the super close and close ranges but loses a bit in the close mid and mid ranges. An auto rifle is good for close, close mid and mid, with a bullet hose gaining power up close and losing a little farther out. This goes on and on for all of the archetypes and sub archetypes, and without rifled barrel, I think that really puts hand cannons in the spot where Bungie was maybe hoping to get them. But with the ability to change the range option on a hand cannon through rifled barrel, they basically get to bypass one of their weaknesses in ways 
that we haven't really been able to tweak on any other weapon. This is part of the reason why auto rifles were pretty bad for a long time. Sure, the damage did get nerfed, but you basically had hand cannons and auto rifles fighting for the same ranges, and hand cannons were just plain better. Now, had this been the case when Destiny first launched, I don't think people would have really had a problem with it. But because we've had hand cannons be dominant for so long, and people enjoy using them so much, doing something like ripping off rifled or reinforced barrel from hand cannons would spur what I could only imagine to be insane amounts of hate from the PvP community. For PvE, it's a lot easier to adjust the ranges in which you fight things, so if you want to play aggressive with a hand cannon, you can do that for the most part, the same way that you can play far away with a scout rifle. In PvP, it's much more difficult to adjust those ranges on the fly, and it requires a lot more game knowledge, map knowledge, and presence of mind to always be in the ideal range for your weapon. This might lead to the question of, does Bungie need to balance PvP and PvE separately? And while I think the answer is yes, I don't think what I just talked about is the main reason why Bungie should move to that kind of system. So, uh, yeah, that's my little ramble on Fatebringer and, and hand cannons. Something I'd like to clarify with this video is that I don't want it to be misconstrued that because I said some things in this video, that I want them to happen. I liked picking people off with Hawkmoon in two shots from sniper range. Trust me, I did. A lot. I just don't want people to think that because I made this video, that I want hand cannons nerfed or I want rifled barrel removed from the game or something like that. It's just an observation that I have made. Cool? Alright. Cool. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.